Today, Chennai, uh, we are going to have a look at Chennai Metropolis, which is quite different from uh, uh, Chennai City, and uh, that's the point of this presentation. I'm going to share some uh, slides. Share. And I'm going to set that. So this vision that has to be a metropolitan vision, not anymore a city vision, is, is, is taking away the short-sightedness of an urban vision. And that is uh, relevant for the future of Chennai. The difference between a city and a metropolis is that a metropolis is a set of uh, urban units uh, with a significant daily uh, commuting, which is quite different from a city, which is a single urban unit with a single uh, government with a single uh, policy and so on. And in a metropolis, there are many policies, many governments, and, and you have to deal with a different type of governance and a different type of, of territorial or physical management. And it's, it's the difference between psychology, which deals with, with one individual, and sociology that deals with many individuals. And obviously, it's two sets of different uh, approaches that are uh, completely different. I'm going to go very fast because we have no time. Uh, we cannot go through all the uh, discipline of metropolitan management and, and knowledge. Um, really, I'm going to go to, to very specific points. And uh, you cannot do logarithmic uh, mathematics if you don't know arithmetic mathematics. So if really you get a bit lost in the presentation, uh, I, I suggest you go into YouTube, Pedro B. Ortiz Metropolitan Inception course, and you have there uh, the first uh, uh, lecture. There are 20 short lectures of 15 minutes, and then you will have a, a full scope of what metropolitan discipline is and, and to understand what we are going to be dealing with in, in this presentation. Um, size is important. The larger a metropolis is if uh, their managers know how to manage that metropolis. The more, the larger the metropolis is, the, the more efficient it is, the more powerful it is. You have here four countries in Europe, France, uh, Germany, Netherlands, and Spain. The, the uh, small crosses are the different cities in each country. And uh, the, the, the height of the position of that cross uh, is the number of petrol stations in that city. And the position on the horizontal uh, coordinate is the size of that, of that city. So you see, uh, as size grows, you need less petrol stations because the slope of that line is, is uh, smaller than 45 degrees. What does that mean? That the effort of building a fire station, the people that have a uh, fire station, petrol station, the people that have to work in that petrol station, all those elements, you don't need them uh, so many. You, you can reduce the number and you can, that effort and that capital, you need somewhere else that will produce more. So that is the proof that the larger you are, the more efficient you are. And Geoffrey West in, um, in Arizona University uh, made the, the economic analysis of it and, uh, and realize that uh, that's not only for petrol stations, obviously, I would not have brought that uh, image here. It is for everything in a metropolis, it's for the GDPs, for the uh, income, the patents, uh, even the crime and so on. And there is a rule that it's, when you double the size of a metropolis, it, it is 15% more efficient. That doesn't mean that if you are 1 million people in a metropolis, you have to invite another million people to live with you to be more efficient. No, it means that if you have several villages, several towns, several cities uh, within an area, if you connect them together, instead of having eight individual municipalities, you will have a single metropolis. So by, by, multi by connecting two of them, you multiply by, you, you increase by 15, connecting, uh, four of them, you, you increase by 30 and so on and so on. So if you see by, by connecting the eight municipalities, cities, towns, uh, villages, which are in a metropolis, you can even multiply the efficiency of a metropolis by 62%. That is why, and we will see in the last slide, that is why the metropolis are the power sources of the economy of the, economy of the world. 
And I will give at the end uh, some 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 figures about that. No, but, but trust me, and 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 that is what it is. No, but obviously, as I mentioned, it is if you know how to manage a metropolis. Because if you don't know how to manage a metropolis, you will have a congestion. Uh, there is no. Uh, uh, no capacity of roads, uh, no traffic management, not enough infrastructures, no metro, no uh, commuter train, no, no, not those elements, and you will end up a, a congestion. And if you go on and on, you end up with a collapse. And many uh, cities, many metropolises are in a collapse. When, when in Mumbai, you take or New Delhi, you take two hours and a half to go to your uh, to your job, that is a collapse. Uh, in metropolis that work in the world, you take uh, 30 to 40 minutes to get to your job. So if you take more than one hour to get to your job, you should ch change the managers of the, that metropolis because they do not know how to manage that metropolis. And how to manage that metropolis is traffic management. Obviously, there are some rules on that. Uh, the same kind of space, you can organize it in another way. And there is as well the increase of infrastructures to be able to hold uh, a, a larger number of movements of mobility and every movement is part of the economic uh, production system so it is good to have a lot of movements and but you have to be able to manage it to be productive as i mentioned some some figures no um uh, in this moment 25 percent 24.5 percent of, of, of people in the world uh, live in uh, metropolises larger than one million inhabitants. And we're actually, a metropolis is, is, is not a figure of number of population, as we saw by the definition at the beginning, is a set of urban units. No? But mostly, you really reach that kind of mechanisms of many urban units when you reach two million and a half, three million, three million, three million people. No? But let's say that, for the sake of it, that uh, uh, beyond one million, uh, population, there are 24.5% uh, 20, 20, of, the, of the world that lives in, in those uh, cities, metropolis of 1 million plus, and there are 500, and there are 500. And those <laughs> metropolis produce 75% of the GDP of the world. And you see there in the map, uh, Chennai is there, no? <laughs> um, and uh, that means that 25% of the world produces 75% of the GDP. That means that people living in metropolis at work produce 16 times more than people that do not live in metro in metropolises. So that's the power, the efficiency, the engine of the world are in those 500 metropolises. And Chennai should be a metropolis that works. And Chennai is in a very strategic position because Chennai uh, is, is in the main uh, maritime routes in the world. This, this blue line shows the, the main maritime routes and Chennai, as you see, is there. No? That doesn't mean that you should leave a focus only on the maritime uh, freight. No? You can focus as well on the, on the uh, air freight. No, but it's a different approach. There are cities that can only bet uh, on, on, the, on the air freight and Chennai has that double uh, capacity. And uh, I have put another red dot on the other side, which is San Francisco, that obviously plays. San Francisco has 14 airports, and uh, all the goods that are uh, computers and so on do not take the, 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 the boat. They take uh, the plane. But uh, Chennai can, can play that double role if they want. And the difference is that in ships, you have heavyweight goods, uh, industrial uh, heavyweight production. And by plane, you have light goods like computers, flowers, and so on and so on. You, you don't take a train in a plane or you don't take a set of trucks in a plane. That goes in a boat. And Chennai, that means that the potential of Chennai as an industry, the production of heavy goods that take the boat and go through that maritime route across the world is enormous. That doesn't mean that we have to forget about the, uh, the, uh, the air freight, no? But uh, Chennai has a, a strategic position to do that and already does and should develop that strategic precision for the world. No? We are not going to talk about uh, economics, we are going to talk about territorial planning, which uh, a metropolis is a very complex system, it's like a, like a country. So you have the social issues, you have the economic issues, you have the institutional issues, the governance and so on, and you have the territorial one. And you really have to manage all of those things together. 
to be able to manage uh, well a metropolis. But in, in this presentation, we are just going to, to deal with the, the territorial one, the physical one, environment, transport, housing, productive activities, and social facilities. No? And so focusing on that territorial one, uh, there are scales on, on the territory. Uh, the 150 scales is architecture, the 1500 is urban design, the 15000 is urban planning, the 150,000 is metropolitan planning, and so on and so on until the, 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 the world in its total. And we are going to focus on that scale of metropolitan planning, which is different from urban planning. So whatever you know in urban planning doesn't apply automatically to metropolitan planning, and you should look at that, those presentations I mentioned in the second slide. At the end of this uh, presentation, you will have the link to the first of those lectures um, in YouTube. No, um, and, and we are going to focus on those 150,000, but you have all the other scales that have to dialogue with the metropolis. Uh, we are not denying the urban scale. We are not denying the urban design, the architecture, or the national scale. We are just mentioning that we are going to focus on that in, in a relationship of dialogue among scales. And what is different is that cities might be monocentric. You might have a center, then a periphery, then the city grows and grows and grows. That's not the metropolis. That kind of metropolis does not work because it is congestioned. Um, everyone has to go to the center. Uh, there is no roads enough to go to the center and so on. So there are different typologies in 2001, uh, the World Bank and UN Habitat uh, Commission, uh, a, a gentleman, uh, Edward Lemon, uh, a Canadian to, to see how the typologies of metropolis. And he found four typologies, but out of those four typologies, three of them do not work. The monocentric creates uh, metastasis, uh, conurbation, congestion, and so on. The sprawl structure creates a web foot uh, phenomenon, so you end up with the same approach as monocentric. The uh, multipolar structure creates an environmental segmentation, uh, segments, and the environment has to be a continuous because biodiversity and so on, so it doesn't work. So the, the, the metropolis typology that really works is the polycentric structures, where you have many centers that have not merged, and, and you can have a sustainable metropolis where the environment goes in between those centers. And that is the situation of Chennai. So do not think of, Ch of Chennai as the center, the core of the city congested, a mess of traffic and so on. Think about the metropolis as a whole and you will change your vision and you will create a system that will work and will be competitive. So in the world what uh, has been done in the last uh, 15, 20 years, is we are moving metropolis from a vision of concentric, uh, a center like, 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 a, like a dot game, no? where everyone has to be in the center with the dot, no? because that's the way to win, into a kind of polycentric structure, reticulated structure, where every case, every uh, square can play a similar role to the other ones. And depending on the municipality and the specifics of that municipality of that urban centrality, you know, the role that urban centrality plays in the whole metropolis, you have a, a different strategy, which is a metropolitan strategy with all the pieces of those urban units playing their own role. And that is more like a chess game than like a dark game. So Chennai, do not play any more dots. Please do play chess. And in physical terms, there are, uh, again, uh, four typologies of, of metropolises, depending. Uh, metropolis are metropolises because they are in, a, in an advantage location. They are not in, in the middle of, a, of nowhere, in the middle of a featureless plane. No, central place theory that you probably have um, studied at university. Um, uh, uh, Christopher Alexander said that, uh, 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 sorry, Walter Cristal. Uh, said that, that, that uh, cities develop in an hexagonal pattern if they are in a featureless plane. Metropolis are never in a featureless plane because metropolis are located in places where they control the relationship between two ecosystems. It can be the sea and the land, like in the case of, of Chennai, it can be the two sides of the river, it can be the pass across a, 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 a gut of mountains, and it can be a valley in the center of the valley between the two sides of the valley. And, and, and we can make the list of metropolis in each of those uh, situations. For example, uh, the coast, the coast situation, which is uh, the situation of Mumbai. You have New York, you have Mumbai, you have Accra, you have Karachi, you have Surat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that is the specific. And when you have 
two ecosystems that meet, and that's why the metropolis is there. When you have you have a line, you have a straight line. It can be a river, it can be the valley, it can be the pass across the Sierra, the mountains, or it can be the coast. It's not exactly a, a straight line, but it's like a linear directionality. And that creates a system of a main directionality and a crossing uh, um, a parallel lines to that directionality, and then uh, a slope of intensity to those parallel lines, which is the, the perpendicular lines. And that is the situation of Chennai. So do not think of Chennai as a single center with radial uh, lines. Think about Chennai in a larger context, uh, in, in Tamil Nadu, in the uh, uh, plain, uh, uh, in, the, in, the plain, in the coastal plain of, of, from the uh, Indian plateau to the, uh, to, the, to the sea. And to prove what, what I mentioned, these are nine, I could bring a hundred. Mm, if you go into my webpage, uh, uh, www.pedrobots.com, you will find a hundred examples and you will find Chennai. Look at, at Chennai, you have there the development of Chennai. But uh, here are nine metropolises across the world, uh, Cairo, Bogota, Mexico, Tehran, Istanbul, and so on and so on. And as you see, they have strong directionalities, very strong directionalities, and Chennai does. And when you realize that, and that was done in Madrid in 1996, no? in the plan of Madrid of 1996, when you realize that Madrid is not a center, that uh, congestions everyone going to the center, so that Madrid has a main directionality, which is parallel to the to the, um, the line of mountains, which are uh, north-west uh, uh, from Madrid, when you have that, and you built up an infrastructure system that that red line was built at that time, it's the M45, now is the main backbone of Madrid metropolis, uh, a lot of industries, uh, commercial uh, main uh, activity is setting up there in that kind of corridor that links uh, the, 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 the national system of Spain and then the perpendiculars that penetrate the quality of the environment of, of the slopes from the, uh, from the uh, mountains and, and where uh, residential areas are located. We are not going to go into obviously the whole mechanism, but uh, to, 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 to mention that that uh, red line was produced in the early 20s and now it's a, it's a full success, is the most uh, uh, used uh, highway, uh, it has public transport, uh, the train system uh, links all that uh, la red line in different points and uh, the, in those points there are uh, many urban centralities that articulate the metropolis. And you have as well uh, New York, uh, mega New York, uh, 44 million uh, people. That would be the third country in the world after uh, the USA and China. If mega New York was a country in itself, it would be the third country in the world in terms of, of production. And it goes from Washington to Boston. And, and you see the, the system of cities that create that kind of mega megalopolis. Um, uh, which is uh, the next stage. Uh, Chennai is not a, a megapolis. Uh, New Delhi is and is going to be the largest megapolis in the world. Uh, Mumbai is, uh, Chennai is not, but uh, Chennai should, should learn from these big um, uh, structures. So when you have a polycentric uh, metropolis like the one to the left, that, that is the design of uh, Edward Lemon in 2001, how do you work with it? You avoid the emergence of the cities, of the towns within it. You create a system of green and blue water and, and watersheds that, that go interstitial into these um, uh, cities and avoid that emergence. And then you have a, 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 a public transport system that articulates all the cities. So you don't have to take the car to go from one place to the other. You can take the train and the metro and the buses and so on and so on. And you can and you use the network of roads mainly for heavy traffic, for uh, trucks, for industrial production and so on, linked obviously to the airport or to the port specifically. But you have a system, a double system. A system of, uh, I'm going to show you, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have a double system of transport. The one which is reticular that provides homogeneous accessibility to the whole area of the, of the metropolis. So you can put your, your 
a pawn or your king or your queen or your rook or your uh, knight, uh, wherever you want. There is a strategy of location depending on the role you play in the metropolis. And so that is through the road system that is homogeneous, but you want to avoid the, the jams and the uh, people uh, taking the car to go to the center. So you provide an extra accessibility to the center through the public transport, which in a metropolis with 3 million inhabitants has to be a commuter train. And Chennai has a very good uh, rail track system that can provide for that very easily. And the double system, you see the superposition of the two system, the, the road and the rail creates that kind of um, uh, reticular system with some diagonals that provide that accessibility to transport uh, to the center. But remember, those diagonals are not road, they are uh, train traffic. So we were seeing that you create this kind of uh, met, um, environmental quality going through the, uh, the, the units, and, and then you provide all that uh, transport system, especially public one, the, the commuter train one. And then when you have to grow, and Chennai is growing very fast in terms of housing, when you have to grow, you locate those housings around the train stations, creating urban centrality, so people do not need to take the car or do not take three hours to go to the jobs through uh, buses and so on. They really can link to anywhere in the, uh, in the metropolis in one hour at most. And the main metropolis of the world, the one that works uh, in one hour, you are across any point in the metropolis. So the, the creation of housing states around these uh, rail stations, and that was done by London in 1847. And uh, they, to develop the, the commuter train, what they did is locate housing states around the station so people will take them on the, the, the train. And that is the mechanism that works in a metropolis. We have seen that slide. But this uh, mechanism that is the metropolitan scale, 150,000, has to dialogue with the urban and the urban design scale. We will not get into that. We will just mention it again. Look at the uh, full inception course in uh, if you want to, 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 to go into deeper detail. No? And then you once you have the mechanism of the metropolis, you go into every one of the cities, the towns, the, the, the villages, and you design the urban planning yeah, the dialogue between the metropolitan dimension and the urban dimension, you do the urban planning of each of those. And even you create the point around the metro station, the, uh, sorry, the commuter train station, the public transport, um, you create the urban centrality, which has to have at least seven elements. And those elements are the intermodal station, the uh, commercial and offices. Uh, so people will go there, not, not just from residential to other somewhere else. People will come here to work, commercial and offices, public spaces for people to, to relate to each other, to create a social network, uh, residential institutional buildings to provide services uh, from the administration to the people, social facilities and elements that represent the identity of, of that area. If you have those seven elements, uh, you will have a success of an urban structure uh, related to the metropolis and these elements have to be in all the urban centralities, but depending on the percentage you have, if you have more residential or you have more offices or you have more uh, social facilities, that urban centrality will play a different role, will be a knight, will be a, a bishop or will be a pawn. And, and, and then uh, it is the proportion that you have to design and every municipality have to play the role uh, best for them and best for the metropolis. And that is part of the metropolitan management. Uh, that requires a, a different type of governance, and we are not getting to that. And so if you are dealing with a chess game rather than a, than a dot game, every, every municipality can play that different role of being a pawn, of being a queen, of being a king, or being a, a knight. This is the case of Bogota, but I can show you uh, 7, 10, uh, 20 cases. We are going to focus on China. And, uh, Chennai, uh, you, you, you are looking at Chennai with a close uh, vision of uh, short sight, and you are seeing a Chennai which is for you circular, semicircular, you know, because you have the, the sea, and then you are producing radial uh, rows that uh, provide access to the center, so the center is absolutely congested and, and collapse and inefficient. You know? And when you see uh, the, uh, the uh, natural structure of Chennai, uh, Chennai is not a uh, radial, it's not circular. You, you have 
the, the rivers, you have the creeks that go from the Ghats to the sea in a parallel fashion, and then you have a link across the sea, you have a very shallow sea, you have a very shallow uh, coast, um, that is a problem that we'll see later in the floods, but you do not have a radial system, you do not have an orbital system. So you have to think big, you have to change your, your, your short-sightedness to the vision of Chennai, and you should not just uh, see Chennai as a city, you should see Chennai as a metropolis, and as you see, the main directionality of Chennai is the coast, and the secondary directionality is the perpendicular to that coast, that blue line and that red line, which is perpendicular, that penetrates from the coast to the Ghats, and you have there the, the coastal plain, that that's what you have to, to manage. You have there a lot of um, talking, <laughs> a lot of uh, writing, uh, but uh, as we are dealing with uh, with uh, YouTube, you can always stop the the, uh, the image and read it, or or go to the other um, uh, files and reports that I have mentioned. You are doing that kind of round shape with uh, with linear di diagonals and so on. Uh, and you should change that that approach to a metropolitan approach, not any more urban. And I have mentioned those designs, that com uh, compatibility of the road, private uh, transport, public transport compatibility, and so on. No, and the, the chess game, uh, you can read that if you stop the, uh, the uh, YouTube approach. Uh, so you see, you are still doing... Uh, orbital roads, you are still doing uh, 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 ring roads that do not work. Whenever you do a new ring road, what you are is promoting the main centrality, the single centrality. When you do a ring road, you are congesting the city. You are not uh, taking congestion away of the city. You are congesting the city, and that has been proven for already a century. We have been doing those ring roads for a century, and the cities are more and more congested because you are creating the focus on the center, and you are providing the means for the people to, to, to try to go to the center, where you should uh, provide the means for the people to locate in different positions in a polycentric uh, system that is much more efficient. So uh, Chennai has to change that approach. And this is the existing roads of Chennai that, as you see, in a natural way, they are not concentric, they are not radial, they are not orbital, they are reticular. You have those lines parallel to the, to the sea coast, and then you have those other lines perpendicular to the sea coast. And if you take those lines, which are the main structure, the natural structure, before you impose an anti-natural structure in Chennai, you have this kind of system. Uh, that this is uh, abstract, but look at this. This is the existing roads in, in, um, in lines and the uh, complementary roads that will complete the system in dotted lines. And you see that the system you already have in place is not radial, is reticular, and you have the, the way of developing that system in a natural way. And on top of that, you have a very good um, commuter rail system. Uh, rail track system that can be developed in, in a commuter rail uh, important system. And you have there already existing urban centralities that can play a different role. I'm not going to, to mention the names because it's going to be difficult for me, but you already have there the existing uh, centralities that can play a different role within the chess game of Chennai. And you can develop more centralities playing complementary roles and all together playing the chess game with every one of those municipalities with a potential of developing uh, industry, offices, uh, software, uh, uh, all types of, of different approaches that you remember, you have the location advantage of being on the main sea route of the world across. So you can do heavy industrial production that you can put across the world uh, as, 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 as the main strategy of Chennai. And then you can complement those commuter rails and no need to go on doing metro. Metro is not metropolitan. Metro is urban because metro is supposed to go through a, a consolidated urban area. So uh, metropolises are these different municipalities that play a different role. So uh, do play a, a commuter rail uh, strategy 
and you have some lines that will complement the existing ones. You have there, you see the blue dots are the airport and the uh, different uh, airport cities that you can build around that airport system. And then a similar accessibility has to be provided for the port system. And if you, we focus into uh, uh, Chennai, we have here the existing road system that has to be prioritized and, and providing more capacity there and, and less uh, uh, junctions that will congest the system. So it's a more or less long, long distance systems within the metropolis and the elements that will complement the system to make it not congestible. And again, those uh, centralities within the, uh, the urban area of uh, Chennai that can be developed in, in different parts. You, you do have already some uh, engineers, some, some professionals that have realized that the radial system did not work and uh, there are attempts, attempts to create um, a more metropolitan uh, system. I, I approve of that, I congratulate these uh, engineers that have had already that vision of uh, decongesting Mumbai, um, Chennai, and, and making a more competitive Chennai within a, another approach. No? You are growing very fast. You have uh, on the range of 3.6% uh, annual growth. And that makes that 3.6% uh, uh, annual growth uh, of housing mix, means that in 20 years, you are going to grow by 50%. And if you grow by 50%, it's not anymore, uh, it's not anymore a, a natural growth, it's an explosion. And you have to deal with that explosion, creating the land necessary for those housing to locate. Because if you don't create that land, those houses are going to be produced anyway, but they are going to be produced in shanty towns, in the locations that they should not be, in areas of low land value, which are dangerous and probably in the future will be flooded. And, and so on. So you have the, the duty, the administrations have the duty to create that land, not to, to do it themselves, but to promote the private sector, to uh, make that land uh, available and possible around those train stations to do. And then you have the uh, urban, uh, urban planning, the, the next scale, when each of those uh, municipalities must have their own uh, municipal approach to how to plan around those uh, station. So this is the diagram. When, when you realize what is the diagram, you understand the structure of, of Chennai. No? So this is the diagram with the existing uh, rows that have to be uh, protected and promoted and, and uh, increase the, the capacity. And then the, the uh, rail system with the potential of growth of that rail system and service to the different municipalities. I'm gonna go very quickly. We have already been talking for half an hour and I want to, to be short about floods and droughts in Chennai. No, I have worked for Chennai some time ago with the European Union. And it was a time, I don't know if uh, 2021 has been a bad year or a good year, but uh, we were working in 2019 and we, you either had floods or droughts because the monsoon the path was changing and the whole climate system of, of India was changing. And, and obviously uh, you have to address that uh, because climate change, I'm afraid is not going to be uh, possible to stop. So it's going to change. So you have to adapt to it. And this was images of that time where the, the uh, square meter of, of uh, water, the cost in Chennai was $7 per square meter when in developed countries uh, in, uh, in Los Angeles or in Madrid is 70 cents. So you are paying 10 times more the water that in developed countries, you're paying 10 times more with 40 times less GDP because Americans GDP is $60,000 uh, 60, per capita and, and India GDP is uh, $2,000 per capita. So 30 times less money and you are paying 10 times more the water system. So really, you have to, to, to change your mind in how to provide water. You, you are providing water by shallow uh, reservoirs that really do not contain much water. And when the uh, pattern of rains in monsoon and so changes, you, in th those reservoirs are not enough. We have seen in the previous um, uh, plans and in this one, those reservoirs which are in the plain 
that get filled up and I have very little one month or something like that uh, capacity of water for the use of, of Chennai. No. And in many countries, what we have in our reservoirs is four years, not one month, four years, because we have cycles of drought and rain that can go for four years and we have to accumulate water capable of uh, confronting those droughts for four years. How to, uh, to, to, to um, deal with that, uh, it's, it's a long pattern, read this, stop the uh, YouTube video, read this, but there are uh, three ways of, of uh, addressing, and we will see that later on for sea level rise. There is three ways of addressing a problem, and the paleontologists uh, have realized how animal species do that, and we have to do the same thing. But let me say that in developed countries, uh, in those cities which are large and do not have water around easily, we bring water from very long uh, away. You know, in, in Los Angeles is 800 uh, kilometers. Uh, in Madrid is 120. In Paris is 150. In New York is 200, so on. And we have large uh, retention reservoirs for four years, not one month, for four years in the mountains. And, and then we canalize that, that water to the main cities. Obviously, that's infrastructures. That is investment, that's infrastructures, but that's the way to be developed. And you see in Los Angeles, they bring water 850 kilometers away. And in Chennai, that will be bringing, bringing water from Goa, no? uh, which is not necessary, it's not the case. In Chennai, you have the Ghats, the, the uh, uh, Indian Plateau brings all that water to the Ghats of the Bay of Bengal. And so it is an issue of all those Ghats retain that water, create the reservoirs, and then feed Chennai uh, as I mentioned, not for one month, but for four months. It's, it's an easy way, has been done in many countries, uh, but the climate change of, of India requires that new vision, which is not an urban vision with two or three reservoirs shallow that are not enough, it's another vision. And you have there a lot of guides and a system of, of, uh, uh, of canalizing, uh, of canals uh, bringing that water to Chennai uh, in, a, in a larger you have the gas and you have their locations for those reservoirs. And that was studied and done and presented with uh, the European Union uh, three years ago uh, in Chennai. I don't know if something has been done. I'm afraid those, those messages uh, fall in, in, in emptiness because there is not yet in Chennai that metropolitan vision. And when you are having just an urban vision, this is beyond the scope of your capacities. No? When you are talking about uh, flood, the flood areas because of sea level rise, uh, Chennai is in a difficult situation. All these uh, blue areas are areas that are going to be flooded in the future. When the, in uh, in uh, two thousand, sorry, it's not uh, twenty ten. It's twenty one hundred. Now is 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 two thousand and one hundred. Uh, probably the, the water level will go up uh, by 2.5 meters, and those are the areas which are going to be flooded. In that case, and uh, again, paleontologists have studied, we have three ways of, of addressing the issue. If you have a lot of investments, you have to confront that uh, level rise. You have to, to put the barriers. London is doing that because you cannot move London away. If you have a very uh, short investment, very small investment, a small village, uh, fishing village in the Philippines uh, is not worth it to build a huge infrastructure to contain, uh, contain the water rise. So you move the village away because it's much cheaper. And then in the intermediate situations, like in Kitty Hawk, in, in America and so on, you find adaptation systems uh, that we are not going to get into that. But uh, you have really to address that flooding a problem that is going to happen more recurrent, uh, more and more often uh, as years go by. And really in 2100, the situation is going to be uh, dramatic. So let me say that we have been looking just at the territorial issues of uh, Chennai. 
that that is only part of the mechanism of metropolitan management. We are working uh, with the metropolitan management through a, a technique which is called the Metropolitan Brain Shops. We are doing that with the European Union and the uh, Delhi government in uh, several uh, metropolis around the, the uh, India. We did one in Chennai. This is the one in Mumbai. You see this getting the, the 48 uh, institutions and people that really make decisions that affect the metropolis, putting them together and working out what are the strategies in the different areas of uh, finance, of, of social uh, facilities and so on, and, and, and making an integrated approach and vision for the future. We did that in, in, in Mumbai and it was a success. Mumbai changed the pattern of growth uh, from a circle of one to a, a one of progressions that was already um, uh, suggested by Navi Mumbai development across the Bay in 1947, but was forgotten since. And what um, Mumbai has done and has to do is that new line of development of the Navi Mumbai extended beyond the, the mountains, which are by Navi Mumbai, into a, a new uh, valley, the uh, Saraswati Valley. Um, in 2016. That was done in Mumbai, but in Chennai, really, there has not been uh, an effect. Um, there has not been a change of, of, of vision um, uh, from, from uh, that, that uh, uh, brain shop that we did a few years ago. So you have really to realize that you are not anymore a city. Chennai is not anymore a city. It is a metropolis. And that means that you have to change the short-sighted vision of that uh, ring roads and circular roads, orbital roads and radial roads to a more general pattern of reticular uh, system within uh, Tamil Nadu uh, uh, coastal plain. And that is a completely different approach. And as you have seen, it is a reticular approach. And that is why Chennai is not among the most important metropolis in the world, and it should be. You see here in, in uh, black, the GDPs of the different nations are organized by, by rank, and in red, the different metropolis around the world and their production and their GDP as well. No? You see India in ninth position, India should be in, in second, in third, in first position in the world. You are one of the future big powers, uh, world powers, and, and you should be uh, not. And, and you are not because your metropolis are not working as they should work. And uh, we, if your metropolis uh, nations are in the world position because of their metropolises, uh, because they are the production system of, of a nation. So India really uh, requires the metropolis of India to work well to, to position India in the position that it deserves. No? You see India and you see Mumbai and New Delhi, which are there. Mumbai with 11% of the GDP of India, uh, New Delhi with 9% of the GDP of India. Uh, but Chennai is not, and I think Chennai should be there. And for Chennai to be a metropolis with world-class position, uh, you have to change the vision from a short-sighted vision of the city to a, a vision of the metropolis. Thank you very much. And uh, we have been talking for 45 minutes. I will be very happy to take your questions. And next in this uh, last, you have there, in YouTube, the link to the uh, discipline, uh, uh, Metropolitan Discipline Inception course, you can link there and you can see it to understand all the things that we have been going through very quickly. And as I mentioned, to be able to go to, to do uh, logarithmic uh, mathematics, you must know arithmetic. And if it was difficult for you to understand the leaps uh, between the slides and so on, please go there and all will be explained. Thank you very much.